We get started on the live broadcast here. The flying reporter played old Ben and uh, Rory on air. Bit of a bonus Ken Bruce impression coming up here. Well, great new singles on the way for you right after this. <laughs> Crazy man. <laughs> Good evening and uh, a warm welcome to our YouTube live broadcast. I'm the uh, flying reporter, uh, John Hunt, and uh, I fly PA-28s as a private pilot. Uh, with us tonight, uh, we have plain old Ben, uh, as many of you know, uh, Ben Cornwell, um, who's a commercial airline pilot. And uh, we also have, I'm just adjusting his picture because as always, technicals catch us at the last minute. We also have Rory Alskeri. Hello, Good everybody. Evening. Hey. Good evening to you both. Um, Rory, do you want to tell our viewers what it is that we're doing tonight? And um, we'll, we'll, we'll come on to um, the kind of running order for the evening, just whilst I sort out the vision problem. It's very good to have you with us. Dream. OK, I think we're up. Uh, evening guys, I'm ever so sorry we had some problems there with our stream and hopefully we're transmitting again now. Thanks for staying with us, I know we've lost quite a number of you. Um, we're just trying to get things back up and running again. Obviously everyone got on the internet at 8 o'clock and uh, messed this all up for us, but um, we seem to be back with you now and uh, as I say, apologies for that. Uh, and um, whilst I just re-establish what's going on, Rory, do you want to tell, us, tell our viewers um, what it is that we're up to tonight? Rory, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello, everybody. Um, good to uh, have you with us, and uh, welcome to our little broadcast. I hope you can hear me okay now. That we we thought we'd do this little um, session this evening just as uh, something interesting, whilst everybody's stuck indoors on the lockdown. 
Um, you know, everyone I'm sure is frustrated as the weather starts to improve and spring's coming that we can't all be out flying and uh, enjoying that. But that's the way things are going. So we're doing the right thing, staying in and trying to make that a bit more entertaining by uh, having a, a chat between myself and Ben and John this evening. And we want to involve as many of you guys at home as we can too. Um, with uh, you know this this whole broadcast we're going to be on on air now here on youtube until nine o'clock so um we'd love you to to get in touch with us um with a couple of specific things um we're hoping that you'll um get in touch uh, with some photographs of uh, perhaps your favorite photograph from fairly recent flying times that you've been doing um the way to do that is you can email We've got a special email address for this. It's pilot at flyingreporter.co.uk. That's pilot at flyingreporter.co.uk. And send us your pictures and just a, a few details about what aircraft it was and, and where you were flying and what you were doing and what have you. And um, we'll go through some of those later on in the course of, uh, of this evening's broadcast. Um, I'm, I'm sitting here enjoying having this chat with you guys um, and also kind of in amongst a mound of, uh, of study materials in my bag down on the floor here because I'm currently going through ATPL hell uh, as I've just branded it and um, the ATPL exams uh, there are 14 of them so I'm working through those and of course Ben has been there done that and got the t-shirt <laughs> and has already been on the on the high in high demand from myself offering some uh, advice and help with that so uh Ben, how, how did you feel going through it and how glad are you that all that's passed you now? Well, one thing I've not got, Rory, is a Rory on Air polo shirt or a hat. You've been <laughs> saying you'll send me one for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit uh, further down the line than you. So I finished my ATPL exams around two years ago, um, thereabouts, and then went on to do my commercial pilot, um, multi-engine and then a competency-based instrument rating, then a multi-crew cooperations course, jet operations course and then applied for a job, went to work at Flybe, and I spent eight great months uh, flying a Dash 8 Q400 around, which was um, really good fun. I was based over in Belfast, so it was a real adventure uh, moving over there. Um, John's just putting up a little bit of footage now from one of my line train flights, so this is us taking off from Manchester on 2-6 uh, left, um, there with one of the line trainers, and I had someone on the jump seat acting as a safety pilot, so they just are another... Uh, eyes and ears really for what's going on just to, to keep everything safe obviously safety is the most important thing when operating an airliner um beautiful aircraft to fly the q400 really enjoyed it um but then yeah so a couple of years i had ahead of you rory got got the first job and unfortunately um uh everything sort of went a little bit um not great so went went down the down the pan uh, and fly unfortunately went into administration which it's been like that now for um coming up a month um, and when that happened I was actually down in Exeter doing what's called an LPC OPC so that's your license proficiency check where you have the simulator check every six months um, and I passed that um, in a day and then that evening Flybe went bust and I was unfortunately stranded down in um, Belfast fortunately though um, my good friend Anthony um, decided to come and rescue me so you might have seen some of those videos of November 949 after Charlie uh, the nice Cirrus SR22, and he flew all the way down um, from Blackpool to come and rescue me. Uh, we then flew over to Newquay um, to pick up my friend's mum, and she was uh, stuck there as well. I got some uh, flyby deal flights and then back up to uh, Blackpool, and then that's about it now. So I join you guys in uh, isolation and <laughs> trying to bring a bit of entertainment to everyone this evening. And Rory, you've 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 just soloed, or about three or four weeks ago, you soloed in in the helicopter for the first time. Yeah, that's right. Um, it was an amazing experience. I mean, of course, every pilot remembers their first solo, and I remember my first solo in the uh, in the microlight very well. Um, the helicopter is a completely different beast, and um, I, I I felt quite frustrated for the first couple of weeks of doing the training because it was so different to the aeroplane, and I was wrongly thought well I should be able to do this you know and pick it up a bit quicker because I've got some experience in the aeroplane and I remember having a conversation with Ben where he said no it's, it's not the same thing you know you'll you'll get there just keep going and various other people said similar things and, and we just kept going at it and it was fantastic it's a great feeling to, to go solo for the first time in any aircraft um, but to do it in a helicopter and it's something I wanted to do since I was a little boy is uh, it's pretty awesome so I was very happy with that it was well, really good fun 
Well done. Um, Let, I've got a, we've got a, a video of, of that. Love in on the, uh, oh, well, let's have a look at that then if you want. Uh, meantime, there's a lot of love coming in on the uh, on the YouTube chat here. A lot of people sending their best wishes to you, Ben, um, with, of course, the demise of Flybe. And, of course, I've got a lot of people who might be watching this who've been affected by that one way or the other as well. Yeah, thank you for that. And um, I'm sure everyone is feeling for you, Ben, and, and, and all the other people that are affected at the moment. It's extraordinary times. And... Um, Obviously, Flybe was pretty much the first to suffer, and I think, unfortunately, things are not looking great for the airline industry at the moment, but uh, fingers crossed they will recover. But um, if we can sort of pirouette to happier times, Rory, I'd love to play your solo video. Um, this was a, a little video that you made of, of your first solo in the, uh, in, in what was the, what's the helicopter? It's a it's a Cabri G2 helicopter made by a French company called Gimbal. Um, so it's a I think it's a 160 horsepower Lycoming engine, um, and uh, yeah, it's a lovely little helicopter. Let's have a look at this video then. This is just a little clip I put together of uh, some moments from that first solo flight. in a helicopter absolutely <laughs> elated what an amazing feeling well, big respect to my student uh, instructor or well, real instructor Steve and the other Steve as well and all the instructors here for getting me to this point I'll try not to bash my head on the road <laughs> but yeah really really happy with that very exciting awesome stuff what great fun <laughs> Rory that was absolutely amazing um, I'd love to get my helicopter license one day and the, the Cabri definitely looks like a uh, really fun helicopter to fly, obviously. John and I had a bit of a do at flying <laughs> helicopters a couple of years ago, which was uh, great fun. Um, but, I mean, what, what would you say was uh, a more exciting first solo in a fixed wing aircraft or in a helicopter? Oh, that's a difficult question. Um, a lot of people have asked me which I prefer, and I think it's it's so difficult to answer. The, the first, that moment of first solo in the aeroplane, um, you know it's the first first uh, you're always going to hold that close in your heart but the helicopter i think because i'd struggled so much more with the physical mechanics of getting the coordination and getting the kind of very light touch that you need to to operate it taking me that much longer to get the hang of that i mean it was about i think it was 27 hours before i went solo in the helicopter compared to just under 14 in the microlight so that kind of gives you an idea of the difference in the level of complexity between the two. So I think it feels in some ways that much more of an achievement when you do go solo in the helicopter because you have to work that much harder to get the physical mechanics of doing it. So it was, uh, it was, it was certainly quite a moment. It was, it was really good fun. And talking of good fun, we've got another bit of good fun planned this evening, haven't we, in regards to uh, getting someone on FaceTime with us? We yeah. certainly have. Um, and uh, in addition to people sending us pictures, which I believe you've been doing in your droves already, so do keep those coming in, um, we'd like to, to pick somebody at random to join us on this uh, YouTube live um, between myself and uh, John and Ben and uh, have a bit of a chat with us about your flying and, uh, and whatever you're up to whilst we're all sat in lockdown. 
And the way to kind of enter this random ballot to join us uh, on YouTube is to email your um, FaceTime, either email address or phone number, um, to pilot at flyingreporter.co.uk. That's the same email address to send your pictures to as well. And uh, we'll pick somebody at random probably in the next sort of uh, 20 minutes or so and uh, and get you on with us if the technicals uh, will hold up, which they seem to be working all right. A lot of people when we went off air at the beginning were saying Squawk 7600 and all that sort of stuff, <laughs> which was amusing. So thank you for that. Um, yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, and I'm sorry fun. about the slight uh, mess up at the beginning. It looked like we had an internet uh, connectivity problem. Um, I, what I haven't worked out from you, Rory, is is why um, why you've gone over to helicopters and how that how that happened. Because it, it for me, it sort of all came ever so uh, suddenly. Um, there you were working at the BBC in a what, what I can only imagine was a great job and one that you'd wanted to do for so much of your life. Um, and then you decided to chuck all that in and 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 do the commercial helicopter training. <laughs> uh, how did that all come about? Yeah. Well, I guess it is a bit random, and it, it did it did probably certainly appear, you know, via my YouTube channel to look like it came as a bolt out of the blue, and it, it did a bit to me, to be honest with you. the The reality of it is, is that I wanted to fly helicopters since I was about six years old, um, and for various reasons, I couldn't get in the military because I had, you know, some medical stuff that when I was a kid was an issue, um, and. I also didn't have the money to do it privately um, when I was, you know, leaving school age. So I had to come up with something else. My other love was radio and music and all that sort of stuff. So I got involved in radio and ended up getting a job in the BBC. And that's when I went off and, and did 10 years working for the BBC. But the nagging feeling that I always wanted to fly helicopters never went away. And I moved to Manchester with with a job with the BBC and got involved with um, you know one of the flying schools, Main Air Flying School at Manchester Barton Airfield, and they taught me to fly the microlights, which seemed like a, a brilliant kind of thing to do because it was affordable. It was right there on my doorstep. The airfield was a 10-minute drive from my house, and it was a, another you know really welcoming, fun community that I could get involved with and and actually learn to fly and get some experience with all the things that that go with it so it worked out really well but then when i got the opportunity back in uh, october last year to get involved in the uk's first integrated commercial helicopter pilot training course um for i think about 20 years since the last integrated heli course has been run i i jumped at it because and like i said it's something i've always wanted to do and I certainly don't feel like I'm turning my back on fixed wing aviation because I love that as well. I think you can you can be a fan of all sorts of different things. And um, my ambition certainly is to share as much of the heli journey on YouTube as I can. And, you know, as we sort of move forward and, and I get into the commercial world of flying helicopters, then I'll, you know, hopefully have some spare cash and time at the weekends and stuff to go and fly the microlights again. That's certainly the plan, anyway. And and <laughs> if how, we ever get let out of the house. And how how difficult was it? To, was it like starting from scratch, um, all over again, learning to fly? Or, or, or I mean, as as Ben mentioned, we, we Ben and I had both tried flying, and and I was abysmal at it. Um, ben seemed to have the knack. Was it? Um, did it? Did it? Did it sort of come naturally to you? Was it a huge? difference from what you were, what you were expecting it to be um i wouldn't it definitely didn't come naturally to me but then i don't think the the airplane did either i mean it takes it takes work um you know even if you have got a, a feel for it um i think i definitely found the helicopter more challenging physically than i thought i would because i'd imagined myself being able to fly one for so long and then because because I actually can fly the aeroplane. I thought, well, you know, it's, it's bound to be not easy, but how hard can it be? Classic sort of arrogant 30-something attitude. Um, it is very hard. It's, it's just a different, it's a different kettle of fish, and there are, there are quite a few things early on that you've got to kind of master, which in some ways are the hardest things. Once you get them hovering is the obvious one mm. and as you guys know from from that great video that you did together up at barton which i remember standing at the fence watching and being very envious of that whole 
um, situation because I had yet not had a go at flying a helicopter and there you guys were doing it. But it's it's just a you've got to do all those controls all at once and in minute amounts and and try and anticipate how the aircraft's going to react to all those different control inputs, which you're constantly having to adjust the whole time. Um, you know, I've been sort of explaining to people that, you know, well-trimmed aeroplane, you can more or less let go in, you know, in fairly calm conditions and you can turn your attention to the radio or the transponder or having a look at your chart or whatever. Once you're in the helicopter, as soon as you've lifted up into the hover, you can't take your right hand off that cyclic for the entire flight. Um, you know, unless you're in a machine that's got autopilot, which I'm yet to experience, and therefore you're you're already limited on what you can do. Um, you know, with your your spare limb, um, so it's you know it's it's just a different sort of challenge. And I was like I said, I was quite frustrated to begin with because it took longer than I thought to get the hang of it at a very basic level. Now that we're a little bit further on, we're sort of just before we came into lockdown we were about to go and do our first uh, cross-country solo navigation flights and it's starting to feel like my previous experience in the airplane is helping a bit now with things like the radio i'm not phased by asking for a mats transit or you know mats penetration zone transits all that sort of stuff i'm not phased by you know a bit of navigating with it the... oh brilliant and um ben i mean obviously you've been through it all just happened so suddenly didn't it and I mean you mentioned that you were sort of ended up stranded at, at Exeter but how did the news reach you and was did it sort of come as a surprise to you as it did to everyone else? Yeah I think the day before there was uh, something uh, in uh, one of the online newspapers um, and I was on a break between doing the simulated sessions so um, it kind of you looked at it and I, and I tried to compartmentalize it. So obviously you need to perform well at these simulator assessments. It's really, really important that you get good scores, for things such as uh, command upgrades, the captain upgrades uh, a few years later. So I always try and compartmentalize little things like that, put it in the back of your mind, fly the simulator session uh, that night, uh, well back to the hotel that night. Um, and then similar sort of thing, more stuff in the news and will it happen, won't it happen. It was a little scare in January as well. Um, and then the next day, same sort of thing. During the simulator break, it got a little bit more serious, compartmentalised it, put it away, finished off my uh, licence proficiency check, um, and then went back to the hotel. And when I was sat with um, the captain that I was with, I sat with a friend of mine, and um, the captain that he was with, they were doing their sim check uh, session after us. And there was loads of other flyby people in this hotel in Exeter, right at the airport. Um, and the news started coming out really slowly. And the moment that I realised it actually happened was when they turned off our in, uh, internal company websites, uh, where I've got like, my logbook online. And so like a couple of hours before that, I'd gone on and downloaded my digital logbook as much as I could <clears> do. Um, and it had just gone, and the Flabby website had gone. Um, and we were all sort of loads, probably maybe 30, 40 of us, um, were uh, in this hotel drinking, just couldn't believe it, and in disarray. And I woke up the next morning just absolutely stranded. Uh, in Exeter, I was meant to fly back to Belfast uh, that morning, um, and, I, and I was stuck. So I had to call on uh, good old Anthony to rescue me, <laughs> uh, and that was about as much as we knew really. They hadn't let anything else, um, anything else on. It was like we kind of found out from the media and then from the website going down. And then that night, I think maybe at two in the morning, we got an email, uh, and then the next morning, loads of emails, um, and the administrator did like a live. Um, dial in things, so you could go on your phone, dial in, listen in what, what was happening, and then that was it. We just said you made redundant, see you later. So, yeah, fun times. People, very, very distressing. People will want to know how you're doing and, 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 and what you're doing, and I know you, you know, you've know you got your, your privacy and people might not necessarily understand that, but is there anything you can say about where you're going now and what you're, what you're doing to try and, and uh, get employment again? Yeah, so I'm, I'm looked for sort of jobs available online, um, and I'm, I'm excited for the new opportunities. Actually, I absolutely love flying the Q400 for Flybe, but there's a, there's some things, one thing in particular that I've looked at which I'm really excited about. Uh, definitely want to get another pilot job, and sort of in between now and getting another <coughs> job, uh, I'm just trying to keep current really. Uh, and currently, something we've all spoken about in the past, but I've got my simulator back at home. I'm using X Plane. Uh, and I'm doing flights from A to B. I've gone on something called VATSIM, which is like uh, virtual air traffic, well, not virtual, it's like air traffic control, and you speak to other people that act as air traffic controllers, and I'm doing raw data, NDB holds, and all that sort of stuff. 
uh, and just trying to understand the industry, uh, researching uh, places I want to work, um, and and see obviously you know that one I mentioned in particular. So it's just a really rocky time. I really feel for everyone else at Flybe and everyone else affected by this. It's not just um, you know us, the pilots. There were 620 Flybe pilots. It's everyone else in the company, two and a half thousand employees. It's also the people that worked at the air, um, the airfield. So I mean, at Belfast there was the ground handlers, there was the air traffic controllers, um, people that would do the uh, you know reduced mobility to help people push them through the terminal in a wheelchair. It's all these people that are being laid off um, or put on leave. Um, and I think the, the sad thing with this all is, with what is going on at the moment, uh, really unfortunate with COVID-19, is it's kind of masking the fact that Flybe isn't there anymore. Um, and I think if this all hadn't happened, it would be much more noticeable because it did offer great regional mm. connectivity. Um, definitely, you know, I mean, looking at the amount of flights out of Belfast per day to Manchester, there was at least sort of three, the same to Birmingham, East Midlands, all over the country. Um, but yeah, I'm doing really well. Um, everything taken into account, I'm just trying to study. I'm, I've released some new videos, two videos out. Uh, I'm editing sort of a backlog of old things. So yeah, I'm not doing too bad. Thanks for asking, John. No, it's our pleasure. And I think people will be very keen to know what, you know, how you're getting through this time. Definitely, I think um, it, there's a. It's a very good point that it's it, the loss of Flybe, you know, has left a, a void, um, which I think has been masked to an extent by the fact that you know so many of the airlines are grounded or almost completely grounded because of the the coronavirus and and you know what what happens to it, the industry as a whole once the you know the whole thing has started to to move on a bit is anyone's guess. We've had quite a lot of questions in. Um, to all three of us um, so thank you for those via our own Instagram and, and Facebook accounts and also um, on the YouTube I'm seeing the, the questions and the comments streaming in here and thank you very much to everyone for, for taking the time to do that we are trying to read as many of them as we can whilst talking which is serious <laughs> multi-skilling um, and uh, we will look at them afterwards as well uh, uh, you, you mentioned currency Ben and of course that's something that you're you're needing to, to keep going as you as much as you can at home um, a, a lot of people might not have the the flight sim equipment you know or be that at that far through their their own training or their own flying to be able to utilize that much yet so I'm wondering what the two of you um, you know, would advise people or, or have anything you would share, you know, by way of trying to remain current? Because a lot of people have been asking me um, about the details of that, which unfortunately I don't really think any of us have got any hard details. But are there any things that have crossed either of your minds that you think people might be able to do to, to try and, you know, keep their skills as sharp as possible whilst they're at home? And indeed, what should they be thinking about doing? once we are all able to to get back airborne again ben do they do the do, 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 do the do, have you been given any guidance on on what you should be doing have the professionals that that you're in touch with given you any any thoughts i know they're able to extend their uh, validity of the type rating um or the instrument rating every um which you renew every 12 months um for another three months so there were a lot of people that were meant to renew it after me my friends on my course uh, through the type rating there was um, I think eight of us guys, and um, unfortunately, I was the only one on the course. I just, I was just the first one to do it. I was sad I was the first one to do it, but it's a lot of crash sim. Uh, but you know, I, I managed to get mine be validated, so that that will run out in six months. So there's talk of them being able to extend it, um, I believe, another uh, three months or so, um, which means that it, they're more eligible for employment next time round. So they're doing some training online, um, some exams, some sort of group training. Uh, which is great, um, but I think in regards to sort of the, the the private pilots and for general aviation, and I'm still fortunate to keep my GA current. I've, I've done as much as I can whilst at Flybe. Um, there's not really been much out there at all, and we were chatting earlier just about currency and what it means. And and I think the thing to consider is whereabouts are you in your journey of being a pilot. So, um, you know, if you're quite new, you've just got your license, you may be going to have to fly a bit more often to feel current than someone that's got a lot more experience. Um, I know an example of that is you're looking at flying a new type at the moment as well, aren't you, John? That's right, yeah. Um, so, I mean, how do you feel about that in regards to where you need to be to be to cover I think if, on, on what I, you fly? I think if I was, if I was, if, if I went, I, th I already don't feel current in the Arrow, you know, having only just converted to it. 
Um, it's been a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks, um, and I've only had one or two flights in it. So um, I, I'm, I'm definitely going to go up with an instructor in the Arrow if, you know, at any point from now on. Um, I don't think there's much I can do to, to, to remain current or improve my currency, perhaps other than, you know, continuing to read the, the POH and, and look, you know, look at the checklist. You know, I don't think there's much more that can be done. For the Warrior, I would be pretty happy popping, you know, sitting back in, in the seat of the Warrior, um, maybe six to eight weeks. But I, even then, you know, I, 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 you know, six to six to eight weeks of, of layoff, I would I would probably even then be wanting to do it on a nice uh, day, maybe a local flight, not go off anywhere particularly um, difficult, um, because you know I find even after just two or three weeks of not flying, I start to get rusty. So I think, you know, and and I've probably got what four hundred hours now, and so people that are not as experienced as that would probably be think be needing to think to, to, to perhaps get set, get some instruction um, uh, sooner than that and perhaps people with more experience than me could go many more months w without needing to to, uh, to 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 go up with an instructor but at the end of the day I think you've just got to be honest with yourself haven't you really mm. I, I reckon that if if you are in any doubt at all as to whether or not you're you're proficient um, you know, over and above the, the legal minimums, then why not just book some time with an instructor? I mean, I have I had to do my um, revalidation on the Microlite last year and decided to incorporate it with, with, you know, experiencing a new type of aircraft. So I went up to Russell and, and flew with James at the Microlite school there in, in his Eurofox, um, which I believe you've had a, a go in as well, Ben. And... Um, you know that was a brilliant experience it was great to fly with a new instructor because you know they often have slightly different ways of teaching or they have different tips different things that they can show you that aircraft you know had some different quirks to it that i wasn't used to it had a more powerful engine it was much more needed a lot more authority on the rudder than the aircraft i was used to so it, it's just a good thing to do and if you go and book an hour with an instructor thinking that you're you're not really very fit to fly and you, you're going to do that to be safe and then you fly with the instructor for an hour and it turns out you are actually still completely competent and able to do it and you haven't forgotten as much as you thought then chalk that up as a win you've had an hour with an instructor you know happy days and if if they do manage to catch something that that might you know avoid you getting into a spot of bother then that's also a win so I, I i would try and look at it that way i know it's a little bit more expensive than flying on your own but you know flying's not cheap anyway so you know what's a few hundred quid at the expense of of staying safe that, that's the way i would look at it and it's easy for me to say because i'm in the middle of flight training anyway so i've got no <laughs> choice but to go with an instructor um but uh, yeah, uh, just while I'm uh, while I'm on and I'm hogging the mic, um, <laughs> pilot at flyingreporter.co.uk is the email address to send us your pictures, and we are going to choose somebody to join us on FaceTime um, live very shortly. The email address is on your screen now, so do um, do get in touch with us on there. Lots of questions coming in still um, on the uh, on the YouTube feed here as well, and. Um, one of the questions that uh, has been sent in to us is is about favourite airfields in the UK, places to that we can long to visit once uh, we're allowed out again. Um, mine has to be, uh, from a visual point of view, Carnarvon um, on the North uh, Wales coast. Absolutely beautiful spot, lovely place to fly into with the coastal flying and then up over Snowdon if you can get the altitude on the way back. And... In terms of best cafes, I have to say Fishburn's restaurant over on the northeast nice. coast is an absolute stunner. Um, ben, what would you uh, what would you pick? Um, well, I always used to banter you for not going far enough afield, um, <laughs> so because you only went quite locally. John's good at flying far away nowadays. Um, one, one that always comes out to me, like if I'm not sure where to go, a strong um, one which is amazing, which is uh, Turwiston. It's got a lovely, um, nice runway, and it's got a really sort of it's like an airport terminal building with a cafe really high up, so you can sit and do some uh, plane watching. Um, I do love Carnarvon. It's got a good, um, special place in my heart because it's where I went flying to my initial landaways during training. Um, but I could list so many. Newquay um, is great. Shoreham is great, but people moan about their expensive landing fees. Uh, but for us, flying down from Blackpool, you know, it's just 
small change in the big scheme of things. Um, Oban in Scotland, it's beautiful. Glen Forster, I went on a fabulous trip um, with a good couple of friends of mine uh, in the Cessna 182 up to Glen Forster on this grass runway. Um, it's got a, um, in fact, most guys in, in the comments have probably been there. It's, it's incredible, but it's got a sort of a, a hotel there where you can stay over at night and then you wake in the morning, walk out, see all the aircraft and the lake. Um, it's fabulous. So, I mean, I've got the list is endless for me. Um, I, UK, I probably say, I mean, I love going over to the Channel Islands because you sort of sort of remain in the UK, but you feel like you've gone, gone overseas and you probably cross a bit of France on the way. So that might be cheating. Um, and the fuel's cheap, and uh, which is amazing too. So um, I'd like to go to Guernsey. I haven't been to Guernsey yet, but I've been to Alderney and Jersey and, 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 and have enjoyed my trips both there. Um, yeah, Turwiston I would agree with, and Turwiston's great, isn't it, for the country, because it's sort of fairly well positioned for a large proportion of our aviators. You can get to Turwiston from anywhere. I went to Norwich the other day, and that was, that was very good at the weekend. I know they can be quite expensive in the week, but it was... Um, I've been there. Yeah, it was about twenty-six pounds to land there in the Warrior. Um, uh, I'm, so, but for me, it's 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 more these days. It's about um, it's about the destination. It's not necessarily about the airport and the airport cafe. I really like travelling somewhere to go and do something and maybe have an overnight there. So that's kind of where that's kind of how I pick my aerodromes at the moment. Um, Harden is fantastic. You know, the the home of Airbus up in North Wales um, yeah. near Chester. Great for Chester. Um, really reasonable prices and, and such amazing staff there um, and a huge long runway. What's not to like, you know, so um, we go there a runway? lot. Who needs a long <laughs> runway? <laughs> you don't need, you need, you you need to tell someone's garden. You need someone's back garden now. <laughs> I am worried about you in, in, that, um, in that helicopter, though. I mean, it's, it's, it looks so small. Is it, is it cramped in there? It, it is quite small, but it's actually quite deceptive. There's more space in that than there is in the Eurostar because you've got, you're not physically rubbing shoulders with the person sat next to you because you've got the collective and the sort of central console in the way. So that's an improvement. Um, and there's a fair bit of headroom as well, actually. I was, I was able to uh, emulate um, Ben learning to fly from Kemble with the old camera strapped on the head thing and without dunting oh, yeah. it on the wall too much. So it's, <laughs> it's not as bad as it looks. Um, it's, it's pretty good. Um, lots of people commenting with uh, with their favourite places they've been to visit, and it looks like the ones yeah, that we picked out are, are, on, are on the among the list there. Um, Manchester Barton, Southend, Shore, and people are saying Fishburne's excellent. Um, kind what of. else? We... Gloucester. I've been to Gloucester loads, mm. though, but Gloucester's lovely. Yeah. Um, mm. Alderney. Someone said Alderney. Yeah, mm. uh, I agree with that. Where else? Turwiston again. Um, Oban somewhere I definitely would like to go. I've uh, it looks fantastic in the pictures. Yeah. yeah. Um, Shoreham, yeah, lots of stuff. Um, I've seen quite a few questions from people um, asking if we have any more information about license validity extensions and medical extensions and, and validity. We've we've touched on on this a little bit, but just as a kind of broad brush answer, um, my gut feeling is that the government have got an awful lot on their plate trying to work out you know how to to kind of firefight all the various issues of of every industry around the country and i'm sure they will get to ga and you know aviation generally as part of that process i i'm the the heli center of our you know from my point of view in in very close contact with the caa regarding um extensions to licenses and validity periods they've they've allowed us to continue with our atpl flight training via remote link um in much the same way we're doing now with you know webcams and stuff at home so we have a certain number of hours of classroom study that we have to do for this integrated course and they're allowing that classroom study time to be conducted remotely on the internet which is excellent and i think really really kind of forward looking of them um so i, I appreciate that and i'm hoping that um, you know, I'm hearing from some of my other colleagues who are on PPL courses that they're being allowed to do similar things with the ground school and are being able to start working ahead to ATPL work. Um, so hopefully that's going to help. And I, I would imagine that where they can, they will grant extensions to things 
Um, and of course, if we're not not able to fly at the moment then you're not going to end up in a situation where something's run out of currency but you know you can't you know you, know, you can't fly because you're not current but you would be able to fly if you see what i mean because we're all mm. stuck indoors anyway so i'm hopeful that it'll resolve itself before it becomes too much of an issue for people is that is that the general sense you both have john yeah i mean i saw that they'd resolved some of the commercial pilot licensing um issues to some extent and and it, it, there was a there was a recognition wasn't there there was some guidance that came out today about recreational GA flying, and in that, I think they mentioned that they're they're looking at uh, medicals and validities for for recreational flyers, private pilots, and so on. Um, but their priority has been the commercial side. So I suspect we will we will get more guidance um, as as this goes on. Um, I just wanted to that mention great, that. I, I think today. Yeah, the guidance. Yeah, yeah, really. Yeah, it cleared it up, didn't it? I mean, to be, lots of people have been. They're, they're, not lots lots of people have been abiding by the sort of social distancing but a, a, a small minority had continued to fly much to the uh, of of those um not flying and um i think that sort of settled it really didn't it uh which was helpful um i just wanted to say i've had loads and loads and loads and loads of photos thank you so much for sending them in um that's awesome yeah we're not what what, what we're going to do is we're going to show i can show a few of them now i hope um and uh, I, what we'll do is we'll, we'll put them all in a gallery um, and put it on Facebook or on my website or both, in fact, um, so that you can see everything that everyone sent in. And I'll try, I'll try here and tell you what we're looking at um, or at least who the picture has come from. And I apologise just simply because I'm uh, struggling here with the technology. But this has come from Euro Aviators. Um, if I could find his email in my hundreds of emails that have come in in the last 30 minutes, I could tell you more about the picture. But um, we'll put details on, on the website. Let me see if I can scroll on to the, the next picture. That's we'll very me... nice. It is. Here's another one. Oh, there's some... We recognise that aeroplane, I think, oh, don't we? Oh, who's that handsome chap on the right there, John? I think that might be me. <laughs> is that you? Somebody sent, sent us a picture that of you. That was me and my friend Max. Uh, that was good. I think that was going on a nice tour of the country in, uh, in Oscar Papa. Michael Great Jones, to Mike, the gallery people. Michael Jones <laughs> sent that one in. Uh, let me Very see nice. if I let me see if I can send, show you another one. Um, okay, that's a uh, easy jet. We don't not see many of those uh, at the moment, are we? That's from Lisa Sargent. Um, dee -dee -dee. What else we got? Oh, this is good. Looks like a Cessna. Let me see who this has come from. Um, Great act of recognition there, John. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know I had an Airprox once at Lid, and they said what type was it? I said I don't know. It was white. And it had a single engine. <laughs> um, and I, I, I said, I'm not a plane spotter. Um, this is from Jake Johnson. Thank you, Jake. Sorry, I'm not giving you more detail on these pictures. This has uh, been a bit tricky. Um, this is oh, Fly Lucas sent that. Now, that's a Dash 8, is it? Yeah, I think that might be when I flew into Exeter, maybe. It doesn't um, look branded, though. It doesn't look like it's got Flybe yeah, on it. No, they were um, ex-Republic ones, so they they were going to go to a paint scheme, but I think that's when I visited Exeter, and oh, okay. uh, Fly Luke was down there, which is pretty cool. Okay, what else have we got? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah, recognise the Reg from somewhere. I don't know where, and that's come from... In fact, I don't know who that's come from, because I've... Oh, no, I said I do. That's from Nathan DC. Nathan is a pilot oh, of Biggin Hill. He's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, and... Got another one here. Um, this looks like Jamie's cross country. Well done, uh, Jamie. That's awesome. Good work. Thank you. So we'll put um, all of these on on um, on on a gallery. Sounds good. We have a comment coming from Ollie Reed on YouTube. He says in Germany they've uh, quite quickly said they'll extend licenses, ratings, and medicals for up to four months. So hopefully, if that's something they've done in Germany, then that'll be replicated over here. Um, just looking through some of the other comments. Um, on, a good uh, on there, YouTube the as well. Line, uh, from Hugo, who said, no, Ben, they were ex-Brussels airline aircraft, not ex-Republic Dash 8. So thank you, <laughs> Hugo, for you. me. Yeah. And thank you for letting me stay with you when I first moved to Belfast. Very kind. <laughs> <laughs> um, lots of frustrated PPLs, you know, at various stages of their um, process. Uh, Jonah, he says that he's uh, on to PFLs and NAV next once this is all over. Um, he just managed to finish his solo flying uh, Speedbird UK, I believe that's one of your mates, Ben, um, asking uh, hopefully the CAA exam centres will be open again in June when my Mod 2 exams are. Well, I'm in your boat as well with that one. I've got exams booked for the 2nd and 3rd of June 
um, over at Coventry. So very much hoping that we can still go ahead and do those. It's a case of, of uh, who knows, really, at this stage. We just have to keep working away and hope for the best. Do we fancy trying to surprise one of our viewers on FaceTime and see yes, if we can so. join them? Um, I was uh, Basically, I'm going to dip in to these emails i was hoping to sort of get them all written down and organized but i'm sort of doing this with one hand tied behind my back so it's very difficult i'm just going to kind of pick one at random that looks like it's going to be easy to call um and we'll see if we can cool. do it so if you want to talk amongst yourselves for just 30 seconds whilst i try yeah, and do have a this look through the comments and just say gordon Quinn says um atpl exam time limit is now 24 months so that's been extended Oh, that's Because um, it's 18 months normally, isn't it? So that's that, Gordon thinks that. So that would be great. Yeah. Um, that's when you take your first exam, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, somebody here, Jack, says uh, GA not big enough to be recognised by the government. I don't think that's true. Um, I'm sure they will. It might take a while. Uh, somebody's come and yeah. saying Booths at Salford has reduced stock since you left, Rory. <laughs> 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 I wasn't that heavy on the pork pies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Right, I've got somebody. Uh, have you guys got any up. advice for somebody getting started with making aviation videos? I, I feel like I'm at the point where I can make some pretty nice ones, but other than that, I have no idea. That's a good question, Smoking Spitfire. Thank you for that on YouTube. We'll come on. I'll make a note of that, and we'll come on to that. But I think um, John's got our guest. I'm going to try. Up, I'm going to try. We'll see if it works. So just bear with me. Um, we'll see if we can do this. It's like one of those um, commercial radio competitions where they call somebody and they have to say a certain word to win some money. It is, isn't it? There's no money involved. It is. <laughs> so I've called one of our um, viewers at random. Um, it's, we're just waiting to see if it's going to connect. I just want to make sure that they're dressed <laughs> and decent before I put them live <laughs> on, uh, on that YouTube. That would be rather a shame. So uh -huh. I have this connected. Yeah, could Who's you this? turn could you turn your screen round so it's um, horizontal for me the other way? That's lovely. There we go. Right. Yeah. Let's see if we can talk to this person. Hello. What's your name? I'm Jason. Hello, Jason. And where are you? Hey, Jason. Nice to meet you. I am in a little place called Edenbridge. Oh, Edenbridge. I fly yeah. past Edenbridge quite a lot. Uh, we fly from the same aerodrome, really. Ah, excellent. Well, tell us about you then, Jason. Oh, this was planned. Um, at the <laughs> moment, I'm, I'm doing my ATPLs, or trying to, anyway. Yeah. Um, uh, through the CAA, which they've obviously cancelled a lot of the exams. Um, so, yeah, we're just, uh, it's just a bit of a stressful time at the moment. Nice teddy bear enormous... collection there, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how oh, that's... Good all. grief, look at that. <laughs> Have my, you done any of the exams art. yet, Jason? Pardon? Have you done any of the ATPL exams yet, or are you um, still on the teddy bear collecting? <laughs> still on the teddy bear collecting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I was due to sit exams next week, actually. Um, but they, uh, they cancelled right. them last week. So oh, I've nice. been in... 12, uh, uh, I'm doing a new sort of course. I'm doing it down at FTA Global. Um, they're doing it over nine months now. So I spent the last 12 weeks uh, preparing for the exam. Um, only to be told oh. that we're not going to go ahead and do them. It's incredibly frustrating, I'd imagine. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm worried that I might not be able to sit at mine, but they're booked for June, as I said. So I can only feel when you were supposed to be doing them this week. That's, uh, that's really disappointing. Um, are you? Do you have a PPL already then, or, or, or what are you? What are you flying? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a PPL. Um, I fly the PA twenty eight. Um, so yeah, I've, I've been doing a bit of hour building uh, towards, uh, towards the end of last year. Uh, so yeah, uh, just just trying to go uh, commercial. How many sort of as Ben? Say again, Ben. Right. Yeah. How and, many sort and of hours do you we were... to work towards uh, getting? Are you just going to go for sort of the? 175 hours and then do a 25 hour CPL. Or earlier, what's your plan? Did you Sorry. hear that, Jason? The, the, the uh, line got, broke up a little bit there. Do you want to say yeah, the I'm... question again, Ben? Sorry. Yeah, I was just saying, in regards to the hour building, it's something I get off, asked often. So, are you doing 175 hours and then doing a 25 hour CPL, or are you planning to do a few extra hours? What, what sort of the way you're going about it? Um, 
I'm, I'm looking to do the 160 hours um, and then start at, again down at, down at FTA, where you start with our MEIR uh, and then do the CTL afterwards. Okay. So that, I, think, I think we come out with two, 220 hours after, after we finished with all of that. If I'm not mistaken. Have you done any cool hour building trips? Have you been anywhere nice? Have you gone to France? If you live down the south coast, what have you been up to? Oh, my, my hour building trips have been awesome. Um, I've been doing it with a guy that uh, John's done with, uh, uh, Buddy's Aviation. Uh, okay. So we flew down. Yeah, so we've, we've, I've, I've been to uh, Germany, uh, to Croatia. Wow. Um, so yeah, I've done, a, I've done a lot of those trips. I've been, I've been more more across the France border than I have actually um, flown in the UK. Oh, good for you. Have you been up north to, to Lancashire, you know, lovely part of the world? Yeah, I'm, I'm slowly starting to, to fly around the UK. I actually went on a flight last Sunday uh, to Dunkerswell um, and then right. over to Cardiff, which was, which was quite nice. Got, the, got my CPL um, 300 nautical mile cross country in. Brilliant. Excellent. Do you have any questions for us before we uh, let you go? Um, yeah, I did actually have a question for Ben. Um, I, I did send one through to him. I was just asking, like, sort of, it's, it's still very early on for me, but um, from the process of applying for a job sort of online to actually getting going through the interview, and what is the whole process of that, just in terms of what to expect? Yeah, so it's a stage which you kind of um, get to the end of all your training. So you do a CPL, MEIR and MCC jock. Uh, now you've got to do UPRT, which is Upset Prevention Recovery Training. And then you're ready to apply for jobs. And I mean, I went on a course after this. I went to someone called Flight Date Wingman, who uh, is a great guy. It's a really good course. Um, and he had to sort of said three things in regards to looking for a job. So number one, look for job security. Then look for lifestyle. Then look for pay. So that was something I was definitely um, considering when, when applying for jobs. Um, but I think there are courses out there, like his course, which let you learn about what the interview process is like, um, what you need to be doing in regards to studying for the technical interview, uh, for the competency-based interview, um, and the sort of group exercises as well. So I think when you get to the end of the flight training, you're on to the next stage, which just isn't really talked about, and that's preparing for that airline application, getting your CV ready. Um, and I, I sort of talked to friends at, at FTA that are a little bit ahead of you. What, what did they learn? What went well for them? Um, it is a scary and really uncertain time, especially with the cost that you've invested into all of that flight training. Um, so, yeah, just talk to people, get your face out there. A lot of people go on LinkedIn, um, go and do courses, um, that sort of thing. But, you know, message me. I'll happily help you out. And that goes for anybody. If you're in that position, just drop me a line. That'd be awesome. That'd be all awesome. Right. Thanks, Jason. Nice to speak to you this evening. And to you. All the best with it all, OK? Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Cheers, Jason. Cheers, Jason. Oh, that was cool. That was cool. Excellent. You, I like that. That was nice. That was good fun. We, we, we'll, yeah. see what, we'll see where we are. We, we, if we have time to do another one, we will. Um, but um, there was a good question, Rory, wasn't there, about YouTube videos, which I think yeah. we ought to perhaps address, since we're, that's, that's what we all have in common. <laughs> exactly i think i mean i certainly get a lot of questions about it and i'm sure you two get even more having been at it for for a considerably length of time longer than me i mean i i have to credit both of you as uh as inspiration for me starting rory on air myself because oh, i i watched rory. your videos and and loved them all and and found a lot of useful things from them um, you know, e even the fact that you were flying, you know, PPL airplanes rather than the microlight, but there are so many similarities, particularly with things like the radio and navigating and visiting airfields and all that sort of stuff. So it's really useful. Um, I think that's one thing to say is that, you know, it's a, it's a useful resource and therefore more people adding to that useful resource of information and, and prior experience is a good thing in my view. But I'm sure you guys can add a lot to this too, but there are quite a few things that I think make for a good video and things that if people are thinking about starting filming some of their flying um you know that are very well worth considering from the off to make sure that you kind of get off to a good start you're obviously going to improve and develop things as you go uh, i i sort of cringe when i look back at some of my early videos and then you know see how much they've got better since and there's still a long way to go but if i can start with you ben what do you what would you say is your sort of top tips on 
on how to to create a successful YouTube channel and what makes a good video? Uh, it's a really interesting question, and I was thinking that we all three of us have different styles to our videos. And the reason that I started doing Plain Old Ben um, was because it took me six years to get my private pilot's license. So I've self-funded all my flight training since I was 16, um, and I got a, a gliding scholarship through the Air Cadets. Um, I had that course, and after that, I got a job as a waiter at my local Italian restaurant and started doing my flying. But um, as you sort of get older, I was 16 then, turn 17, you get a car, turn 18, you go out drinking, and your overheads, you know, in, get get greater. Um, so it actually took me six years, and I had two big breaks. And during those big breaks, I'd sit at home and I'd watch people on YouTube. And this was back before anyone was doing this sort of thing. And I found it fascinating to try and, um, it was almost like keeping current. So there was a little bit of RT on there, but I was watching the speeds they were landing at, where they were flying to. And I thought it'd be a really good idea to get a couple of GoPros myself. So I've got videos from when, uh, before I started playing Old Ben, it was just two cameras in there. Um, and it was just my whole flight, I'd record the whole hour. And the purpose being that I could get to the end of the flight, I could debrief it, I could look okay, that radio call was a bit ropey. Um, you were a bit firm on that landing. You know, you, you joined at the wrong place here, you put the flat, you did all these sort of things to try and keep my costs down, basically, um, and, and reduce um, the, the cost of the flight training. And I thought, well, this is bad. I should put it on, on the internet. So I just put it on the internet um, and made plain old Ben. And I've carried that on ever since. I've filmed all of my flight training up to getting a frozen ATPL. And my sort of style of making a good video is just the following along from the flight from A to B and trying to debrief from it. And that's what's really important to me. So they're kind of like full flights almost. Um, and what makes a good video? Uh, a little bit of music. Um, I like a bit of music because <laughs> it sets the tone for how I feel about the video. And I know people out there uh, aren't massive fans of the music. Uh, but I think for me, just keep it nice sort of edits, a nice clear cut. They're meant to be beneficial from a debrief point of view so people can learn from it. Um, that's my sort of you know advice, really, um, for, a, for a video. Uh, John, yours are slightly different, aren't they? Because yours, are, you were saying to me the other day, you could start a video in the air, or you know, it's a little bit different vibe to mine. Yeah, I suppose um, what I try and do with my videos is tell a story, and they're not necessarily geared towards private pilots or trainee pilots. Although I appreciate that's a large part of my audience, um, I like to just have make a nice video of a nice adventure, a nice flight, where there's a bit of learning that goes on. Um, Usually with a video, I know what the story is going to be um, because something will have happened on the flight or it might be an interesting aerodrome or it, there's all, I always try and find something, one, one key message or one key story that I can get across, be it, a, you know, a lovely views or, or maybe it's, you know, a failure of an aircraft system, although those things are not necessarily uh, the, the kind of things that need to, to make it work. But yeah, for me, it's I'm always trying to look for a storyline of some sort that you can put in the thumbnail, that you can, um, you know, uh, get get interest around. Um, so that that's pretty much what my journeys are. And like you say, mine aren't necessarily, you know, full A to B flights. I don't make I make them less than twenty minutes ordinarily. I I wouldn't go over twenty minutes with my videos. Um, 20 minutes might even be a bit long as it is but you know the loyal followers I think are willing to to watch 20 minutes um, and yes as you say I can start them in the air I can I you know it, 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 the, the, there are no rules in that respect I do like adding music like you and I think as you spend time on YouTube you get to learn um, you know what music is intrusive and what isn't and, and what is going to appeal to a wider taste um, but music is a is a is a difficult one, a bone of contention, and probably mm -hmm. one that creates, you know, generates the most comments. Actually, um, you know, people say they don't like the music very often. Do you find that, Rory? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, I had um, I had a comment from somebody the other day who was who was kind of making the point that they'd rather there was no music at all. But I think the main thing is, do it with consideration. If you plaster music loudly all over it, it is going to detract and it is going to annoy people as you've both said a little bit of music used judiciously can help to set a scene set a mood it can help you move from one scene onto another um and i, I find it quite useful and i hope that it's not too intrusive to, to to detract from the point of the video i would i would add you having a story of some sort is great i've i've got more into 
you know what they call in the business b-roll which is you know extra footage of things you see out of the window that you might reference to it's a lot easier to do in the airplane than it is in the helicopter because you've got spare hands um or you might have a passenger who can who can take some pictures or shoot a bit of video that you can then use i think having at least two cameras is pretty important because it makes life a lot easier when you come to cut i mean i think you know i use three or four um you guys do too and having good sound is is pretty key i mean i would say that having had a, a background in radio but i think it really is important to to try and focus on getting good quality audio a lot of people comment to me i think the the most overwhelming thing people ask me about is is to do with the radio. People seem really nervous about talking yeah. on the radio and whether they're saying the right things and all this sort of stuff. And I completely understand why, because I felt exactly the same when I first started um, using the radio in the aeroplane. And again, I thought, oh, this can't be that hard. You know, I work in broadcast radio. It's not that different, but it's a completely different language. And, you know, there is a right way and there is a wrong way. And we all want to try and be better pilots and to do it right. And and I think, you know, that's something that's really useful. So, you know, get a good system. And you know, we've all done videos about how to record audio properly. But, but I would I would emphasize that it's important to try and get that and include that in your videos. So, you know, a video with just engine noise and, and music and no dialogue. And no no videos. We do get messages and people say, thanks a lot for, for filming that. It helped me out with this. It helped me out with that. And that was something I was really keen on doing from when I was that guy watching the YouTube videos uh, years and years ago when I didn't have a PPL. Yeah, definitely. Look, lots of comments coming here. Flight Deck Wingman says, talking on the radio saps capacity, which we mentioned earlier, um, as being something that's a major issue. It absolutely does. And I would say I always recommend to people that they practice their radio calls in the car or in the shower or whatever and you know play both sides of the conversation <laughs> until you're a, a bit slicker at it um and uh you know a lot of people putting in nice comments saying keep up the good work people are finding the videos useful and entertaining i think i like to think we're doing a bit of a service to to kind of you know the airfields that we visit as well by filming some of the stuff whilst we're there i always feel like a bit of a wally walking into the airfield cafe holding a massive camera with a the fluffy mic on the top of it but on the other hand you know it is it is effectively promoting these places and and helping to encourage people to visit them either by air or or by car or on foot or on their push bike or whatever i mean a lot of people turn up at slape on their bikes and you know watch the aircraft and stuff so i, I hope that it's yeah. it's useful from all sorts of perspectives yeah to i totally agree and um uh, we're, we're, we're enormously privileged, I think, you know, in, in being able to do what we do and have the followings that we do. Um, it, it's so wonderful to to get all the emails and comments and so on that you've been you've been messaging us here. I, I know it may look as if we're not reading them all, but I'm, I, I know I will certainly go through them all um, once we finish this evening and read all, all of the messages that you've sent. And I guess uh, my friends here will do the same as well. Um, and 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 turning up at aerodromes it's rare these days I, i'm sure it's the same for, for both of you to, to to an extent or another you know having people come up and say hi which is just so wonderful and my son loves it yeah. you know um yeah. you know he he chuckles you know when he sees sees somebody plodding across a taxiway and he knows exactly what they're coming <laughs> over to say and it always starts you were with... over to me at Barton, didn't you john yes <laughs> <laughs> and it always begins uh, with are comments... you the flying reporter yeah well, two comments here who are big fans of yours, John. Adrian Arnold says, I'd be happy if your videos were 30 minutes, John. Oh, gosh. Um, he, hasn't, he hasn't said whether Ben or I are allowed to go over 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, well long. I don't I'll take that as a no. Um, and uh, Code Maestro says, I typically don't like music on these sorts of videos, but I find John's use of music um, very good and non intrusive. So uh, that's good. Ben is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we it's... all do our best. I think that's the main thing, you mm. know, for people watching at home, that we, we are doing our best, and it does take a long time to cut these videos and edit them. And, um, you know, I, I tend to work on it for a few hours and then leave it, and then I come back to it and quite often think, no, I don't really need that. I'll cut that bit out. I, I very rarely ever found that a video has been made... I think I don't think I've ever actually found a video has been made worse by cutting something out of it. No. So there's a sort of tip for people who are thinking of doing it themselves. Edit, edit, edit. Cut, cut, cut. It's probably not worth leaving in if you're in any doubt about it. No, I totally agree. We've done our hours. We've done our hour, folks. And I don't know if there's anything more you want to say before we 
wrap up. I'm sure people want to get on with their evenings and get back to the doom and gloom of coronavirus and all of that 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 brings. Um, I don't know what's on the telly tonight, but it's been pretty dismal, hasn't it? Just staying inside, not doing anything. And if you've got children, I feel for you because it's so hard on them. Um, Yeah, I wondered if, I mean, perhaps a final word from from you all, perhaps um, you want to plug what's coming up on your channel or or, or just thank your viewers, whatever it is. Um, I'll start with you, Rory, before we go. Um, well, I'd just like to say thank you both to you guys and thank you to everyone watching at home for, for getting involved and, and being so gracious with your comments and questions. And uh, like John said, I will definitely read through what everyone's put later on. That's my evening sorted. Um, I've got a video coming out in the next few days. I'm hoping this weekend, but I don't want to nail myself down because there's still a fair bit of editing to do. Uh, it's going to involve my colleagues on the integrated commercial heli course at heli center and some more helicopter action and a bit of a kind of sort of tour around the base and some behind the scenes stuff that we do there so hopefully that'll be interesting to people and uh, like ben's been doing i've got various things that were filmed a long time ago that i never got a chance to edit that depending on how long we're stuck indoors for or they may see the light of day so watch this space and uh, you know do subscribe to rory on air if you haven't already and thank you very much for for all those of you who continually comment and like and share and and encourage me to keep doing it so thank you thank you rory a final word from you ben yeah i just wanted to say thanks to everyone commenting i've been uh, looking through all the comments on the side of my screen uh, so many people um that have come to you, nick luke uh, Mr. Stephen, my name, Captain Al's put loads of comments in, Adrian, uh, Marcus, Neil, Mike, John, Brian, uh, Jamie's PPL blog, Flying Central, Flight Tech Wingman, um, Fly Loop, John Hodge, Cliff, there's Rudy, there's so many people. So I'm looking forward to going through them tonight. Thanks so much for everyone putting the comments in. It's really helped us uh, get through this. And thanks a lot for everyone that's messaged in on Instagram as well. We've tried, tried to bring those themes in. In regards to what I've come, uh, got coming up, um, I've got a bit of a backlog of old videos. So I've got another two in the PA28 um, with my good friend uh, Speedbird UK is on Instagram. And he's got great photos. You want to check those out. Um, and then some other little bits. I've got a multi-engine IR training trip. Um, but then that's about it for me. So I need to start doing some flying again when all this is over and do some filming. And I'm really excited to do that. And obviously I'm going to take you up in a helicopter at some point. Both oh, of yeah, us, hopefully. Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 it's fine. Very we, should, easy, John. we should do like a Rory YouTube now. meetup for, for everyone. That would be fun. We should try and organise that. That would be Well, John and I talked about that. Yes, we were we going to do that over summer, yeah. weren't we? Yeah, we did. We will do that. We've got well, to, it's food we? for thought. Yeah, we'll definitely I do that. I think we should. Um, well, thanks to both of you. Um, it's very kind of you to give me your time and, and our viewers um, your time. And I think people will have found it entertaining and uh, will at least have helped pass the time on some of these long evenings where you can't go out and do anything. Um, I think we should try and do this again sometime because I think it's been great. It's been lovely having the audience uh, reaction and uh, yeah, we will look at all of your comments and I will go through, what are you doing, taking a selfie? Um, we will yeah. go through, <laughs> <laughs> um, we will go through all of the people. Oh, we're all supposed to wave. Oh, he's done it now. Um, I've we'll done go... it now. You've got to feed Instagram. <laughs> um, huh. we'll, we'll go through. I'll go through all the pictures uh, tomorrow morning before work, and I'll create a gallery of all of those um, with all of your names. So thank That's you great. for that. Um, but I've had a really good time. I've really enjoyed it. And um... so have I. Yeah, thanks for hosting, John. No, You've my done pleasure. A great job. My pleasure. Excellent job on the hosting, John. Well yeah, done, no both worries. of you. Thank you very much. Take care, everyone. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll we'll see you very, very soon. Cheerio.